chugging along here. Cool, and now we're live. Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, I know not everybody's uh, dialed in yet or still uh, joining as we speak, um, but we are gonna have a special guest for the first hour today. It's gonna be Kevin Hua from the uh, QuickBooks App Store. Uh, he's gonna talk about all the new changes and improvements to the uh, the new apps.com and the uh, embedded app store, which is apps.com is kind of embedded inside of QuickBooks Online. Uh, we'll probably start in about three or four minutes. Uh, thank you for joining. And uh, until then, uh, you can always, if you don't want to join the Hangout, you, which is, uh, you can just use the uh, question panel and ask questions real time there. And I'll put a link to apps.com in the showcase so you guys can see that link too. Showcase. And I put the uh, apps.com link in the showcase there. Let me uh, just make sure. I'm just going to tweet out the link once that, uh, the, that this is happening now. And we're waiting for people to still uh, jump in. I'll uh, just start kind of preview. So next week, we're going to have guests come and talk about um, the uh, Intuit App Connect. So that's the former project known as uh, It Does It. And that's going to come in and pull all that in. Hey, right, we have our first guest today. So Jack is here. It wasn't easy. It's never easy, is it, Jack? It never is. All right. So we'll give it, if anybody else, let me see if anybody's viewing yet. And then if not, we'll, we'll jump in and start. So I don't see anybody viewing it, Kevin, but uh, it's 9.05, so let's go ahead and jump in and start. Um, and again, I'm just going to reintroduce you. Uh, so this is Kevin Hua. He is the uh, QuickBooksAppStore.com, QuickBooksApps.com uh, product manager, and he's going to talk about all the recent changes to Apps.com and handle any questions that you, you may have. Again, you can ask questions by joining the Hangout and participating, or you can use the question and answer panel, and I'll be monitoring those along the way. So with that said, I'm going to go on mute. I'm going to flip over to uh, Kevin and uh, let you run with this. Okay, Kevin? Thank cool. you. Cool. Sounds good. And uh, David, feel free to just uh, let me know when there are questions that come in, and I can focus on some of those. Uh, cool. Awesome. Welcome, Absolutely. everyone. Thank you. Um, so yeah, today I'm here to talk to you guys about some of the major changes that are uh, that have been released on our QuickBooks App Store, which is comprised of both apps.com and also the Q uh, Apps tab within QuickBooks Online. Uh, and then I'll also give you guys a quick uh, highlight of sort of what features we are releasing uh, sometime next week and uh, then can answer any questions that you guys may have. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share my screen real quick, and then I can walk you guys through some of the recent changes so far. And feel free to uh, ask any questions you guys may have for those who are on the call. So here is apps.com, uh, where you can see that the site may look a little bit different from when you last saw it. Um, one of the main features that we are uh, constantly improving but released 
um, the first iteration of already is our new search functionality. Uh, so some, some of you, as you may have noticed, have um, we've changed it up a little bit. So for instance, I'm just going to put on my small business persona hat here and say I'm a small business looking for a CRM tool. One of the first things that I would do is use the search box. And uh, with our new search functionality, what we have is a sort of drop down that allows people to see sort of uh, what we believe are the best uh, recommended apps uh, for this search query. And um, one of the things that is pretty cool now is that if you guys remember our search functionality was pretty bad before, but now it crawls all parts of the app card. So I'm just going to take a look at Method CRM's app card just to show you guys sort of which fields it crawls just for your information. But it crawls the title, the tagline, um, the publisher's name, anything on the about page, so all parts of the description, and uh, the pricing aspects, if you have anything around pricing, and also support tabs, we all crawl. The only thing that our search engine doesn't crawl today is the reviews tab. Um, other than that, I'm not going to go in too deep into our search algorithm in terms of how it ranks uh, certain things, but definitely feel free to play around with sort of um, the different aspects of this, say your app about tab, adding some stuff into pricing, support, uh, but it's good to know that we do crawl all these things now. Hey, hey uh, Kevin, something I noticed yesterday uh, in regards to the, actually the search box itself, that you guys are supporting some sort of logic, because I was able to do like time, space, capital A and D, and then space payroll, mm -hmm. and I basically took, instead of having 100 apps come up under time, I, it came out to just a filter 20 apps. So do you guys, are there uh, other operators that you guys support? Or is it kind of just, hey, what you're used to using in Google or on Twitter search probably works here? Like, do you... Yeah, so I think that's a great question, David. And one of the things that we are doing, as I said, is this is one of the first iterations of us using um, GSA search. And as we do continue sort of uh, supporting different, um, say, special characters and whatnot, we'll keep you updated and, uh, say, send out a blog post or we can come back to this Google Hangout and let you guys know about it. Um, one of the things that I would encourage all the developers on this call to do, though, is if you are, if you guys already have a developer profile, there's a section inside uh, the developer portal where you fill out all of this sort of marking information for your app. It's called meta tags. We do also uh, crawl all parts of the meta tags now, so feel free to play around with that um, that field. Um, it is currently optional for our developers, but uh, definitely. Play around, see see if it helps with your search optimization. But uh, that is one of the other. Kevin, things that we do. yeah, go ahead. Kevin, if possible, if possible, can you flip over to the developer view and kind of show this field you're talking about for sure, the sure. Yeah, let me do that really quick. Yeah. Got it. One sec, guys. Yeah, so one of these fields. Uh, I'll just, I'll just go in here and then uh, talk to you guys about this. So I'm assuming that most of the developers on this call already have sort of um, an app, and you guys have seen this, these kinds of screens. Uh, once you click Publish, this is where all of the information that I was showing earlier, your About tabs, everything, product tagline, product description, industry, you can optimize all of this uh, for search, play around with it, see how it affects your search ranking. Um, but the section that I was particularly referring to is the meta tags here. Um, so this is a section which you can definitely enter some keywords. Our search engines may crawl these keywords now and also descriptions as well. Um, so definitely play around with this if you haven't already. It currently is optional, but um, since this is our first iteration, we will be testing out some of this and uh, we will adjust it based on your guys' feedback as well. Um, but yeah, that's, that's one of the main new features that we are supporting um, search. I'm going to go back to this tab and tell you about some of the initial feedback we've gotten from some of our developers already. And uh, we've already sort of put this into our next release, which is coming out sometime next week. But if you see right now, if I do do a simple search for CRM, it does highlight the first um, sort of uh, app that comes up. One of the things that we heard is if you 
this is pretty much how everyone does a search. But if you search fast and you come up and you just press enter when you search something, it'll just bring up the first app. So instead, in our next iteration, what we will be doing is instead of just going and highlighting the first exact uh, app that does appear, and if you press enter here, it'll just go directly to see all results, and you'll be able to sort of see uh, the different search results here. Um, what we are doing, I'm going to give you guys a sneak preview here of sort of what we have uh, coming up in the next release, but this is... Uh, from direct feedback from some of our accountants and some of our small businesses, um, they have asked and requested for a different view here. If you see here if in the search results page right here, I can't really understand what any of these apps do until I hover over these apps. So what we've been working on, I'm going to show you guys in the QA mode, so uh, uh, discount sort of all the sample apps that we have up here, but I'm going to give you a glimpse of what I mean. And if I search CRM here, you see exactly what I was talking about now. I don't highlight the first result. And if I just press enter, it takes you to the search results page. Now, this is the new aspect that I was discussing, which will be released next week, and I hope will benefit many of our developers here. Um, instead of just the default grid view, we'll be defaulting to the list view, where we'll be able to show uh, the title of your app, the tagline of your app, and then specific contextual uh, breadcrumbs as to sort of how the search query relates to the app itself. So we hopefully will provide a much better uh, contextual sort of uh, solution and list the search results for small businesses and accountants and thereby help uh, with your discovery um, for most of your apps as well. That's awesome. So I'm going to stop there, David, and uh, see if there's any questions right now that I can help answer. Okay, yeah, uh, definitely the, the deeper search like that and, and contextual results is just amazing. Like, we, we've kind of moved from, you know, like a kindergarten version of apps.com to, like, you know, a real version that, that real businesses can use. It's, it's awesome. That's it's right. really, really cool with the search. Um, yeah, so uh, everybody, uh, we'll pause right here. If anybody has questions about some of those changes on apps.com, we'll pause for some questions. And then, uh, I don't know, uh, Kevin, if you want to be, maybe before you, we jump into that. Kevin, did you want to kind of maybe talk about some of those things you're going to be covering? So the way people don't ask uh, questions about the five minutes from now or ten minutes from now. Sorry, I uh, it lagged a little bit. I didn't catch the last part oh. there, David. Oh yeah, did you uh, did you want to possibly give people a heads up of other things you're going to be showing? Sure, um, sure. Just, so, yeah. just so that way they're not asking questions about something you're going to talk about anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's great. So actually, on the same topic of search, let me go back to the screen really quick. One thing that you guys will be happy of as well, and we're extremely happy of too, is we will also be adding search into the QuickBooks Apps tab as well. So this screen that you see here is also a QA version of QBO, but um, one thing that you'll notice is there is a search now in the QBO Apps tab. That was one of our biggest pain points for not only developers, but for small business owners and accountants. Because if you do go to Apps tab, um, there's pretty much no discovery experience for you. Now with the search that we have here, it's very similar to the functionality that I was showing you earlier. Um, you can type in the search query. If you press enter, it'll bring up the search results. As you see here, we also have the list versus grid view, which will allow you to sort of go back and forth between what view you like best. But uh, we hope that this provides a much better discovery experience for, for our uh, customers and uh, helps uh, with some of the discovery of your guys' apps as well. And, and, and just to make sure I heard you correctly, the end user gets to control if they want the list or the grid view. That's right. So it's just a really oh, quick toggle awesome. between uh, sort of what you would like. But we do default to the list view just because we think it's a much better and richer experience and will help tremendously with sort of uh, um, the discovery of apps that you're actually looking for. Got it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So yeah, that's that's pretty much that sums up the functionality in terms of uh, search and what we're doing there. Um, we're cons constantly trying to improve our search algorithm, and but I think this is a huge step forward in terms of what we had before, which was pretty much uh, non-existent. Got it. Um, and then the uh, the other thing that that maybe it doesn't totally fall under you, but it is a big part of the apps.com, and I don't know if you have the ability to talk about that or speak to the, um, the sign-up and shopping experience 
now works much better on mobile, right? That's and right. So, so yeah, yeah. I, unfortunately, I don't have a, a mobile device that I can demo from right here, but I will. Uh, if you guys do have a phone right now, and if you do go to apps.com or uh, and check out sort of the website, it's not mobile optimized. Um, didn't want to get your hopes up there. But in terms of the flows itself, say the get app now flow, sign in with into it button flow, it's not broken anymore. So if you guys remember, if you guys had played around earlier, um, say a couple months back or a month back even, uh, you would have seen this huge glaring sort of white chunk of uh, white rectangle that was obstructing views of the entire web page. We've made uh, changes to make sure that the entire site is viewable. It's not optimized, but you can zoom in and sort of check out certain apps. You can play around and uh, actually go through the entire uh, Get App Now flow um, to, say, authorize. Uh, say a small business owner can authorize the app and then actually go all the way to uh, um, getting into the third-party app. So the flow, we definitely still have a lot of work to do on that flow to make it mobile optimized. Um, but I think this is a good step forward for a lot of our small businesses uh, who are exploring apps because um, we know that many of them are mobile. Got it, got it, got it. So I, I think at that point, let's open up uh, questions and just discussion in general. Uh, Kevin, uh, if you're in the, the actual participating in the chat, you can just unmute yourself and uh, ask questions. If you're viewing only, please use the Q&A panel, and I will monitor that and bring that up if anybody has questions um, from Kevin that way. At this point, there's no external viewer questions. So okay. um, Matt, Stephanie, Jack, if you um, and I know uh, Ben's been popping in and out, but he might have some connection issues here. But if any of you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself and uh, jump in. Oh. Stephanie, you do not seem to have any audio. Uh, yeah, I was muted. Sorry. There you go. There you go. Um, so we used to when when the search um, when somebody searched on CRM before, um, there the the results would take into consideration the reviews and the ratings. Um, it, it, so does the reviews or slash rating ratings do those no longer come into play when somebody's using the search functionality? It's a great question. So as of now, I, I can't go into too much into our detail of our secret sauce for search algorithm, but we'll tell you that um, as we do improve it, ratings and reviews, I think, will be a good part of it. Um, it may not be uh, completely evident right now, but it, should, it will make sense for us to say, uh, Put higher apps, put apps higher up in the search results if they do extremely well. It doesn't make sense for us to say promote one star apps in our search results. So it's a great yeah. question. But uh, okay, well, we'll it's exactly. it's had a huge impact on us and also on the hits that we're getting on our app card. Um, we've got 20 or 22 or 23 depends on whether you count reviews that have suddenly disappeared or not but we've got a bunch of five-star reviews and we used to show up when somebody would search on CRM we'd be in the first line now we're like four rows down we're we're what I call below the fold for sure uh, and it's and it's really it's hitting us um, and so you know, and we work really, really, really hard to get those reviews. It's really difficult to get uh, users to take the time to go out and and write and submit a review. Um, so, it, so that's been a major concern for 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 us. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I think in terms of uh, the things that you can do in the meantime, though, we are um, opening it up to say, crawling all these different sections that I mentioned right. earlier. So if you haven't yeah. already, say, taken advantage of the meta tags, definitely play around with those. Yeah, we'll do. Uh, yeah, try to optimize your experience. Yeah, we'll, uh, we will do that. It's, I just wanted to uh, lobby for getting the reviews and ratings in there because if it were me, you know, and and I were, I were looking for a CRM app and I'm looking at your screen right now, I mean, you know, 
there there are two in the top row that have zero reviews. And there we are four rows down. Makes sense. No, definitely feedback taken, and uh, we'll definitely continue to improve our search results. As I said before, this is just the first iteration, so definitely yep. uh, completely agree. Search results should be uh, surfacing the best apps, and uh, we'll okay, cool. Through. Thanks. Um, is this does Kevin? Is this the end of your presentation, or were you going to talk about other stuff? I was going to talk about a few other things as well, um, okay. but I uh, just wanted to see if there were any other questions around search. Otherwise, um, I was going to talk a little bit more about some of the upcoming changes as well. Yeah, as of this point, Kevin, uh, there's nobody uh, asking through the questions panel. Any of the viewers have not used the questions panel, but if any of you yeah. have questions uh, that are here, definitely throw those out about search, and then if not, Kevin can uh, jump into more apps.com stuff. Okay. Sounds good. So um, I'm going to go back to, so one of the other things that we are doing um, pretty immediately, if you see this, we are making some changes to our home page. Um, as you can see, it looked a little bit clunkier before, but we are removing a lot of the banding, uh, say, those rectangle bands that were unnecessary. We're doing that. So this is a quick review of what we're trying to do to make it a lot cleaner. Also, another thing that you may notice is there's banners um, that are in carousel form and that auto-rotate now. So I think this will definitely play into uh, um, some of the questions that you guys may be able to ask Ronnie, but one of the things that we are planning on doing is if uh, we are planning on helping out uh, certain apps who are part of our Key Partners program um, and putting them, possibly putting them into some uh, collections or categories or uh, banner format up here. And that's not only just going to go up on apps.com, but we are making uh, this uh, sometime for QBO as well in the near future. So I just wanted to touch on that. I know that some of you who uh, may be new developers uh, are not actually in our key partner program, but should definitely consider this. Um, and you guys can ask questions to Ronnie, who's our marketing manager, who's going to be on this call sometime later today. And I think at this point, I think I'm just going to, I think that's mainly what I had planned in terms of uh, demo of new features. So David, if there's um, any other questions, I can answer those now. Yeah, there's still no questions coming in, but I, uh, I just, uh, I had some clarification from Ronnie this week. Uh, cause a lot of developers ask, like, in that newest section, how long they'll be in the new section. And so the clarification on this is it's, it's 15 apps. So as soon as 16 new apps come in, you'll be bumped off, right? So, for example, um, in January or February, I think three apps went live on apps.com, so you could have been there for 45 days. But leading up to big deadlines, like big accounting shows, Stony New Heights, QuickBooks Connect, when three or four apps are publishing a day, you might only be up there for a week. So the uh, the newest is definitely, it's it just, the oldest one gets bumped it, it, it's mid-word, right? The oldest one gets bumped up, the newest one gets in. Um, and so it's just, that would kind of, if you really want to be there the longest time, publish when nobody else is publishing. January, March, uh, February, uh, August, you know, those dead times of the year where people just aren't pu 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 pushing apps live. That's, a, that's a, a good motivation to stay on the newest the longest. Cool. Are there any general sort of questions that I can uh, help answer? Um, you, I don't know if you, if you're the right person to ask this to Kevin. Um, the, uh, let me just see here. Um, QBD apps that currently show up on the, um, on on the App Center. Where, what's going to happen with those? I mean, where are they going to go after September? Will Will they be on the marketplace or? Is, are they just going to be dropped all together? Is there, you know, a plan? It's a great question. Um, to be frank, I think our teams are still investigating sort of what that actually means for QBD apps. Uh, one thing that I can tell you now is right now we don't have any apps, uh, say, that are 
that are specifically QuickBooks Desktop app profiles on apps.com. But we do have a little link in the footer that uh, has sort of all the desktop apps, and uh, and that's sort of the extent to what we are doing with our QuickBooks Desktop apps. But I think that's a broader question that maybe we can have someone from the desktop team come to this Google Hangout sometime in the near future to talk about this at uh, more length. But right now, that, that, that'd be great. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yep. We can maybe get that uh, going in the future. Okay, great. Thanks, Kevin. I have another question about the App Center. Um, we used to be able to put chat in our app card, and we use that a lot. Um, as you know, there's no chat anymore. Uh, what's what's the plan there? So the plan there is we have a story in our backlog. I think in terms of priorities, we've prioritized from our team to make the discovery experience a lot better because it's broken, or it has been pretty um, broken for a lot of developers. Say small business owners we talk to aren't able to find apps um, that they want. So we focused a lot of our attention there. That doesn't mean we completely drop the ball off of the chat. So we do have a story in our backlog to investigate some of how we can help out some of the developers who really wanted to uh, use that chat functionality. Um, but uh, currently, we're focusing most of our efforts on improving the discovery experience. OK, yeah. Um, do you have anything to do with the, the way the reviews are posted or submitted and all of that? Yeah, so I can tell you that Bizarre Voice, um, we use Bizarre Voice to uh, sort of handle our reviews, but Ronnie, I think, would be the, Ronnie, who's going to be coming on next, is the person who sort of manages all the reviews and makes okay, sure. Okay, great. Good. Thank you. Properly displayed as well. Great. Thanks. Yeah, to, to clarify, I don't, Ronnie was supposed to come on at the same time with you, and then Ronnie's actually at a show called IRC. That, oh. app that is happening in Chicago, and I told him just for fun he should have just put a cell phone at least pop in and say hi. So he may or may not come. I, my my gut instinct is he's probably not going to come today. So, uh, but he just was at another accounting show, which could be difficult. Or the uh, Internet Retail Commerce Association (IRCE). Yeah. That's fine. We can probably get him on another, um, say, developer call, and then he can definitely help answer some of those questions. Yeah, I have plenty of room for guests in the future, so. All right, because, uh, David, you know reviews and the way that whole process is happening is, uh, I'm not happy with that whole thing. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I, I've definitely heard that from developers, and, and it's one of those, maybe we're, maybe we're leaning too far on the fence to one direction from fraud, right, versus uh -huh. the, other, we, the other way, which maybe we should, loosen it up a little bit and then do after the fact fraud detection a little bit. We might be doing a little bit, it might be a little bit too harsh because um, we haven't seen, there hasn't been, I mean, I've been dealing with apps.com even when I have my own app. There just has not been a lot of spam and reviews and stuff overall. I just often get something, but you kind of do hoops to write a review. So it's probably like if I was a, if I was a spammer, it'd be a lot more work than I'd want to do. <laughs> like I'd want to try to find a site that it's easier to write a review on. So. But I think obviously just like apps.com keeps getting better, the reviews part's going to get better. Um, yeah. But I can maybe get Ryan to talk about the whole review process. That could be a, uh, an entire first hour topic possibly. That might yeah, be. Yeah, that, um, that, that would be great. And the Google AdWords, that whole issue of trying to get a, uh, an ad approved, would Ronnie be the person for that too? Um, Probably, I, I don't necessarily know if Ronnie's the right guest for that, but it's, it's uh, he probably could speak to the overview of the process. Um, but that's that's one of those like it's less out of our control, strictly from like Kevin's a product manager and he can look at apps.com and be like, okay, let's add these features or functionality. Right, the right. Thing is like Google and people at Intuit are kind of you know have to work together to figure that out. Um, and these things take time. I know that what we're finally close to solving. A lot of you have probably experienced that we send you an email from the developer site and it goes in your spam box, your support ticket. Yeah. If you have Gmail. I mean, it's taken us almost a year of working with Google to finally get us to where that will stop happening. 
<laughs> right? Like Google just keeps putting all our emails in, in, in the spam folder if people use Gmail. So developers create a support ticket, then they get mad because they don't get a response because Google put it in the, and we've done so many things in our end to get around that, and sometimes it's just two companies. It takes a long time to, to work that out. But, but I agree, the Google AdWords approval process is maybe not as smooth, smooth as we would like. And I, I don't know, maybe the, the way they can it going forward is maybe people on apps.com get preferential treatment or priority so it doesn't make as long versus somebody that's not on apps.com, you know, people that are just buying a generic AdWord. Right. I, I'd like to talk to some. I mean, I'm looking now. I just went out to. It's still limited sort of approval because of this. It's been two months that we've been trying to get this this thing approved, and I can't remember the guy at Intuit who says, "Well, I've done what I was supposed to do," and Google is telling me, "Well, we haven't gotten what we need," and so I'm in the middle and. What we need is the Intuit guy to call the Google people and figure it out. Yeah. Definitely makes a lot of sense. And maybe we can uh, bring that up with Ronnie offline as well. That'd be great. Is my audio sounding a little better now? It's been, uh, David, your audio has been off and on. It's been touchy pretty much the whole time. Might be, you might want to turn uh, off your video. All right, let me see here. Oh, sure nothing else is running. I got new, I, got, I just got an internet connection in the new house, and now I'm like, <laughs> it's maybe not as fast as the old house. That's not good. Okay. <laughs> I, I'll pause my uh, video for a while and see if that helps a little bit. All right. Cool, and then one other point that I would mention, hopefully we can get Ronnie maybe in the um, week after the week after that uh, Google Hangout, but we are putting up, uh, if you see the sort of, on apps.com there's an articles link. We are actually gonna be, marketing is working on publishing sort of a microsite with a bunch of success stories and uh, sort of tips and tricks of how to use apps. So um, if you guys are interested about that, Definitely, Monty can provide some more information on that as well. Cool. Are there any other questions that I can help answer around uh, sort of our App Store or apps.com before I drop off here? Yeah, it looks like a couple people uh, jumped in. Uh, Ben's here now and Brian's here now. So if you guys have any questions about apps.com or the recent changes to apps.com search, please uh, unmute yourself and feel free to ask. I don't know if they have any questions. I think we're just sort of ch hanging around, picking up the information. Great, great, great. If, that, if, if that's the case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, invite Kevin to stay if you'd like. And we'll, we'll open the floor to other questions. But it's completely up to you, Kevin. Um, we can uh, basically I'll put up a closing slide and just stop the hangout. But if you want, uh, I'll stop the hangout at the top of the hour. I just record the first full hour. But it's uh, completely up to you if you want to stay or not and hang around and just see what else is on people's minds and join the discussion. Or if you have a meeting or anything like that, feel free to uh, to bail out. It's completely up to you, Kevin. Sure. Kevin, yeah, I'll, yeah, go ahead. Kevin, thank you very, very much. It was, it was good uh, he hearing from you. Yeah, definitely. And hopefully this isn't the last time, right? So we'll, yeah. we'll be definitely <laughs> updating. We're working on a lot of interesting stuff, and it's very good for both the developer, small business owner, and accountant. So. As soon as we do, definitely welcome feedback from all of you. If uh, you can't reach me directly, uh, please feel free to send it over to David, and he'll be sure to send it over to you. Cool. Thank you. Uh, and if you guys are even interested, we could even have you guys as sort of um, some of some of the early previewers, like even earlier than this, if that if that would work. And you guys can give us feedback in those forums as well. But yeah, cool. Thanks for having me, guys. Oh. One fast question. So some of that stuff you showed that was on QA, the, the, the search engine results that are listed in that search yeah. that's in QBO, is that like four months down the road timeline? Is that like next iteration, eight weeks timeline? So the, so the list results are coming out next week. Oh, all right, all right perfect, perfect. That's great. Yeah. Just gave you a quick preview, but uh, again, keep in mind that we this is the first iteration. We don't have list results yet. We don't have QBO search yet. 
But uh, definitely send me guys, send me your guys' feedback once it is launched sometime next week. Just keep your eye out for it, and uh, I'll take all your feedback and try to iterate on it from there. Perfect. Thank you very much, Kevin. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Cool. So Thanks, if you're just going to hang around, the floor is open now. If anybody has any other questions uh, regarding anything or has uh, anything they want to bring up or chat about, I think the only, like, I know everybody's always asked me, like, what's the, the big news of the week or what's been going on? So really the big, big news this week is QuickBooks Online has hit a million paid subscribers. So that's things have tipped, right? If you really step back and you think about the entire QuickBooks space, 20% now are on QuickBooks Online. And I could go back a year and a half ago and there was basically you look at the entire QuickBooks space and under 5% were online. So things have started to tip very, very fast. And uh, if you start playing around, like you can, uh, we talked about last week, the new inventory features. And when you start really looking at those and digesting the inventory features and you can kind of see the inventory stuff as it's coming down the pipe, you can really see where, wow, that's going to enable a million more people to jump onto QuickBooks Online even faster. Like a lot of product-based businesses that are kind of on the sideline because of the inventory and things like that. So it took a while, to, you know, 13 years almost to get to a million. And I bet, I'm willing to bet, by this time next year, it'll be two. It's going. It's it's starting to go that fast. So, that that's the big exciting news this week. Um, the new other, I guess, other news was the um, there was uh, some issues with uh, the OAuth auto negotiation with the cipher strength, and that was causing some problems for some developers. Um, and then so they had. A, they pushed something alive and re-rolled it back. I don't have all the details, but basically our push surfaced up a problem and then some developers had to work around it. But it didn't affect all developers. I think it affected developers that were doing some level of auto negotiation on the cipher string. Cool, so fire away, anybody. It's completely up to you. So the Mac app for desktop is released, right? But not the Windows app yet? I think officially, yes, that is correct. Um, I think you can broadly find and get the Mac desktop app. I think the Windows one's just like a invite only early, early release still. Oh, okay. Um, can we expect feature parity there or more on the Windows, less on the Mac? I know we talked about this a while back, but... Um, I'm going to try and get that team to come to the Google Hangout and demo okay. that and talk about that. Uh, essentially, you know, it's kind of like an embedded browser, right? Right. In a, in a strange kind of way. It's kind of like an embedded browser. So you're getting all your features of the desktop. Uh, I mean, of, of the QuickBooks Online, but in your, like, this kind of cached version in the desktop. But I think it also like levels up one layer where I think they're plugging into like the Mac notifications. And so they're be able to so so just like uh, the mobile version of QuickBooks Online can hook into some functionality of your phone that you can't do if you're in QuickBooks Online in the browser. Same type of thing. Like when this is running locally on the Mac or locally on Windows, it in theory should be able to hook into functionality that's only on your laptop or your PC or your Mac that you're not going to have on your phone or you're not going to have on your uh, normal browser situation. So they'll tie into the OS a little bit. So there could be like small nuances um, between the two OSs because based on, you know, what the way things work. Um, but overall, it should be very, very similar. When it comes down to the QuickBooks Online part, the experience should be very, very similar um, on any device you pick up. How are uh, outside apps going to integrate then with that? Uh, that, I, the, that team told, because it's just a browser, right. in theory, your app should run right inside there. Yeah. Now, with that said, I talked to that team and they were like, you guys should make a requirement where you test their app in this. And I'm like, we have enough requirements. Right. <laughs> like, that's just another thing a developer will fail and they won't get a, through the tech review process, right? So I, I think at some level, it's going, your app would, you're going to maybe want to have your app in there. Um, but I think it's also, I think the nature of how QuickBooks use QuickBooks online 
the end users is kind of changing to where they're going to be using maybe your app seven or eight hours a day and QuickBooks an hour a day, right? So does your app, like how, how much does your app need to run inside of that embedded browser if they'd only open that up once a, once a day, right? But they have your app open in a browser tab eight hours a day. So I think it's, it's one of those like, yes, it should work there just because some users might want to do it, but is like, where does that fit in on your priority? I'm not positive. Sure, These sure, sure. Questions, Matt. We'll, we'll, we'll write these down, and I swear I'm going to try and get that team here. Okay. And we can uh, definitely, definitely, they'll, they'll demo it and uh, deep dive on some of these things because it would be really cool too if they uh, got some. If by working in that browser, that kind of gave you some hooks or access to the uh, like Mac notifications, right? Where you could yeah push a notification or something. You'd be interested if we had some tools like that expanded out for developers. Cool. Hey, um, Stephanie or Jack, do you guys send journal entries to QBO? Oh, most definitely. Do you, is there a way to get the journal entry number to auto-populate instead of sending custom numbers? I don't recall. Okay. Um, do you just send your own custom numbers over then? It depends upon what uh, is in the input file. Oh, right, sure. I forget that you um, are doing mostly imports and stuff like that from Excel, right? Excel or IIF files, basically. Right. Okay. Shouldn't be hard to test that stuff out with the uh, API Explorer. Yeah, I have been, and I can't find a way, and it's super frustrating because when we send custom numbers, it affects like what the next journal entry number is when you create it in QBO. So we don't really want to do that. Yeah, because because QBO is just going to use the last one that was used. Yeah. Um, I mean, I contacted support and they said, no, there's no way, but the API says there is a way, so. I'm trying to think back to, like, the desktop. Like, you could have, I think, two counts, if I remember correctly. Like, like there was the last check number used on the print screens, and then just whatever the last check number used that was in the UI. And so, like, maybe people's printed checks when they order their stack of printer checks, they start at number 5001. And it would keep, and I think if I remember correctly on the desktop days, it would keep track of those two. I don't, um, I'm not positive on the um, QuickBooks Online on how that's handled. But it's interesting that you said the documentation has that. Can you put that link there and then maybe I can get somebody on the doc team or somebody to, to maybe, you know, ver ver verify that. Because I think sometimes that's happened. Some of the documentation seems like it creeps sure. in from previous documentation somehow. Oh, so here's the link. That's, that's the like, uh, documentation creep. I don't know if that's the right. Yes. And then the top, uh, it's the doc number, it says that the preferences custom transaction number determines whether or not it'll autofill if you don't pass one. Um, but I just get blank journal entry numbers, so. Oh, wait, I, I kind of, like, now that I'm kind of uh, remembering this, let me get signed into QuickBooks Online here. Okay. Check, check, check. And it, like, it, it works fine in QBO, like, it'll auto-generate the journal entry when you open it, but I'm not sending a blank string, like, it's no, there's no transaction number there, so it doesn't make sense that they would put a blank string. Like you want, if you, you want to pass nothing and just have QuickBooks stick a number on. Yes. Yep. Yeah. yep. Mm, that I don't know. Yeah. That's how it works for like uh, sales documents, but. Sorry, I'm just typing passwords. 
sign in and I obviously didn't do something right. Could just be a copy paste error in the reference. Okay, so now I'm in there and then move the preferences. Click here, company preferences. Be settings, check, check, check. Oh, do, 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 do. Sorry, I'm hunting. <laughs> I'm in the preferences here. And I'm not seeing. No problem. Let's no customize what I can feel. I don't see all of that. Go back. Go back to the documentation here. Transaction number and preferences. I'm just trying to find that actual preference in the uh, <laughs> custom transaction numbers. Okay, so that's mine's off. So that's for the sales forms. And you flip that on and off, and that has had no effect on the Correct. transaction. Yep. Got it. Okay. Um, okay. So let me uh, send that over to Patty right now. I'll write an email. Number stream. Four. This works. Sales forms for sale. There you go. Okay, so it's on the radar of somebody now. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, it's uh. There's been quite a few posts on the forums about it, and I don't know. Yeah, I'm wondering if maybe it's a it's an API, but like it's a it's it's just a bug. Like maybe the documentation is correct, and there's something specifically wrong with that transaction type. Yeah, I don't know. Okay.
And my gut feel is that the documentation is wrong because, again, that 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 setting, you know, customer transaction number, seems to be in a sales document, a journal, not a sales document. Yeah, I agree. I think the documentation's wrong, but I think it stinks that it doesn't work that way still. Yeah. I like if you if you don't send a doc number, I don't want to have a blank journal entry number. Well, maybe the docs person like knows what it should do. <laughs> they documented the it, the doc is now the, uh, right. the design doc. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah. So either that's going to have to remove from there, and then possibly you know this is now a feature request, possibly. But you're right. I, I, the documentation is probably wrong, and then it's a matter of moving this up a, a, a layer. Okay. What one of the things they they really need is a way of having the programs not affect the users numbers on all of them because uh, you know we import a whole bunch of things from you know an e-commerce site and all of a sudden the user goes and creates a transaction and the next number jumps up by a million because of the fact that we just imported a bunch of things with much higher numbers. Uh, it's just it's not really very good the way it is either on online or desktop. Yeah, I, I can see a challenge too, especially now that people are going to have multiple transactions possibly coming in from different apps. Like that numbering could get a little on the crazy side. Um, and the kind of the same thing you used to exist with like uh, on the desktop side with checks. You know, if somebody did uh, an ATM withdrawal, right, and there there'd be no real they, they wouldn't know what to put in the check number, so you just put ATM. Right, or you put EFT if it was a if it was an online bill payment and you didn't have a check number, and so it's yeah, it's almost like each there, all, there almost needs to be multiple check counters happening or invoice number counters happening, um, or if anything like you could ha I guess it doesn't technically matter right what that number is other than it just can't be a duplicate one, right? You you really need them would all be unique. So if three or four apps are sticking in different numbers, you just can't, you know, two different apps can't both stick in invoice number four because that's just going to screw up the customer later on. Yeah. Even if they just had a way of excluding it from the counter, so if we import, you know, a, a hundred invoices, it doesn't change the, the next number that the user is going to do from the screen. That would be good. Yeah. Especially if they don't notice it, right? It'll just start counting from there. I yeah. agree too. They're working on a thousand one, and we come in with an order number, and we take the ID from the, the e-commerce site that happens to be nine thousand seven hundred twenty-two or something like that, or some long number. And all of a sudden, they you know, right now they go to the next one. It's a you know, it's a million. Ah, you know. I'm wondering if you could, when you bring that number in, if you append. Like let's say it's some, it's coming in from Shopify, where you 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 put some sort of abbreviation and then that number. Um, so that like if you append text to it, if that um, it, for, for, for journal entries, entries, that's not the case for sure. Uh, journal entries are separate, but in general, we do that already. We give that a we have an option you know, for each store they uh, they have defined. You can give each one a unique prefix, but the same thing applies, you know. The user's doing a thousand. We do, you know, a you know one two three. Next thing they see is a one two four. The only way I've found to not get it to increment and go back to the one that they originally had is to enter something with zero numbers in the te in the number. So if you entered ABC, then the next number would be two. Yeah, and, which still isn't great. Right. Yeah, this is an interesting problem, right? Because even in the old desktop days before there was APIs, like just for users, I remember having customers would somehow get that number off that count. Like, well, I need to get it back down to 752. That's my next check. And for some reason, it's on some other number. They're like, okay, great. We're going to create a fake check for 751, save it, then delete it, and then you're going to create your next, and then the number will be back on track again. Right? Like, even in the, the manual days, like, this like the counter get off even before developers started writing it into the files. So I don't know. Yeah, there's. It's one of those like it's always been a problem. Like there's other than. The, the easiest solution is for the end user just to notice it and fix it before they hit save. 
but people never notice it until they do 10 invoices in a row and like, oh, my numbers are all off. Yeah. But you don't see the number until you do a save. Yeah. You know, doing the next number, you know, you don't always see it. Uh, but anyway. And I think there's other ways to cheat too. I think you can leave everything as to be printed, the end user, and then the end user can actually run through the print, don't actually print it out of the printer, just print it to a PDF or print it somewhere else, and then they can just have anything that's in that batch of printing will just start from the invoice number you first select. Yeah, so, but that's, that's unique to checks. It doesn't apply to invoices, sales receipts, and so forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've done that. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think like, on your end as a developer at the end, so when you push it in, like you can't, I guess you could see like what the last recorded invoice is. Only by creating a, a, a new one by the screen. Yeah, that'd be the, yeah, you'd have to create a new one, stick it in, delete it, you'd have to, like this kind of weird cleanup action, that's a lot of workarounds, yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. What's really neat is be able to get the next one, and and also maybe as a, as what as admin only is to be able to change it. Yeah. Almost like there's just an API around number counters. <laughs> like yeah. here's a set of, here here yeah for all the all the numbers. You, you know, hey I want to change this counter or or because then you could like note it. When you get there, stick in your yeah. data and then be like, okay, put it back to the way it was before I made my API call. Yeah. That's the whole... not the worst idea I've heard. Yeah, we, we need a counters API. Great. <laughs> where, where should we add this one in the list? Yeah, yeah I'm sure that's going way up to the top. But they work from the bottom. <laughs> hey, are you, um... I, I opened up, uh... Creepers online in Google Chrome, and it feels like the uh, it feels like the UI is smaller than it used to be, or is it just me? You opened what? Uh, I have Creepers online opened in uh, Google Chrome, and it looks like I'm at 100% zoom, but it just feels a little on the small size. All the fonts. Open us up in Firefox. I don't know. It just feels that way. Looks the same to me. Yeah, it looks the same for me too. Interesting. Cool. All right, I'm gonna um Yeah, it's teeny compared to my Firefox. What's my zoom in on Firefox? 100%. Yeah, interesting. Maybe it's just on my end. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I can't win. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the uh, broadcast here, and um, then we'll uh, at least in the last hour we'll just leave wide open. Let me um, switch flip the screen to sharing. Uh, we're going to end the broadcast today at this point. Um, thank you for coming and hanging out. For those of you watching this after the fact, please uh, try to join us next week. We are going to have the uh, Intuit Apps Connect team to come in. That is essentially the uh, It Does It product that Intuit purchased about a year ago. Um, and that's being uh, transformed to become part of the developer site so developers can uh, more quickly integrate their app to QuickBooks Online and get onto apps.com. Uh, thank you, and we'll see you next week.